fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. All right, partner, reach and get away from my cache of silver bullets. Uh, Pronto, you're the one who's been taking my silver bullets? No, me just trading silver bullets for golden rich Merita sandwich bread. What? Well, it's better than the wampum. I know. But you've got to stop taking my silver bullets for my six guns and putting in Marita. Oh, me sorry. Huh, sorry. Today I fired at a bandit and hit him with a bologna sandwich. Uh, him get away? No, I caught him when he stopped for mustard. Oh, uh, not good. So was the sandwich. Uh, all sandwiches taste better on Marita. All right, Pronto. Here's your Marita sandwich bread. Now empty your pockets, faithful Indian companion. <laughs> Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita! Away! With his faithful Indian companion, Toto... The daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Mort Pierce, owner of a freight and stage line out of Pecos, Texas, stopped in front of an old shack in Limestone Canyon, a few miles from town. Oh, oh. Puffing a large Cuban cigar, he strode to the front door and pushed it open. He stood a moment looking at the three tough-looking men who sat playing cards. Then he spoke. Smokey, I'll have another job for you and Blinky and Al tomorrow afternoon. What is it this time, Morton? My stagecoach is bringing 10000 in new bills to the Pecos Bank. I want you men to get it. <laughs> Having us rob your own freight and stage line sure is profitable. I'd go out of business if it weren't for what we take, Smokey. You men have no kick. You get your share. Uh, sheriff is still hunting us because of the shipment we stole from your freight line last week, boss. Don't worry about the sheriff. He's about ready to give up the search. Hmm. The cigar is about finished. Last one I have with me, too. Sure a fancy band on those cigars. What kind are they? La Marina cigars. Get them all away from Havana. Better throw this on the hearth. Any particular place you think we ought to stop a stage? Oh, well, Rock Valley is a good place. Be careful with your bullets. Drivers and guards are hard to get. We won't weigh them unless we have to. All right, now cover your trail back here. Tomorrow night I'll come out here for the loot. Yeah. I'll keep it in my safe till the excitement dies down. Then we'll split it. Yeah. I'll see you later. So long. So long, boss. The following day, Dan Reed, nephew of the Lone Ranger, was returning to Pecos by stage after visiting Fuen some distance away. As the stage rumbled along the trail through Rock Valley, Dan was suddenly startled by gunshots. Three masked outlaws coming. Must be a hold up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. I keep covered. I'll see you about the pass. Here we are. I got you covered. Get out. All right, I'm not armed. Wait while well, I search you. Yes. Hey, only a few dollars. All right, get back in. Thanks. All right, driver. Throw down the cash box and be quick about it. Yeah, yeah. From inside the coach, Dan studied the three outlaws closely for a moment. 
Then Smokey called out. All right, Trevor, get going. Get up. Get up there. From the stage reached town, Dan went to the livery stable and got his horse, Victor. A short time later, he arrived at a camp in the nearby hills, where the Lone Ranger and Tonto waited to greet him. Oh, ho, Victor, ho, boy, easy, Tonto. Dan told the masked man and Tonto about the holdup, saying that he noticed a strange gray dust on the outlaw's boots. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the place where the holdup took place. Later, they returned to camp. Hold down, hold down. Hold down. Hold down. Hold down. Any luck? No, Dan. A sheriff and a posse arrived there before us and covered any tracks the outlaws may have left. It will soon be dark, so there's little use in searching the hills now. We'll hunt for them in the morning. The following morning, while the Lone Ranger and Tonto continued the search for the three outlaws, Dan Reed rode to town for supplies. Oh, go back to hold. Easy, boy. After dismounting at the hitch rack, Dan was walking past the sheriff's office toward the store when the sheriff called from the doorway. Hey there, son. Come here a minute. All right, sheriff. Come inside. I want you to look at some handbills. Here, look these over. Maybe you might just recognize one of the outlaws you saw yesterday. Uh, sorry, Sheriff, but I don't recognize any of these faces. Oh, well, it was just a thought I had. Well, up there on the floor, somebody dropped the ring. Oh, oh that. Looks like a finger <laughs> ring, all right, but it's just a circle of fancy paper with gold on it. Came off one of the cigars Mr. Pierce, the freight line owner, smokes. Oh, for a moment, I thought it was a ring. La Marina. Yep, mighty expensive cigars. He's the only one who smokes them in town. Has them sent in special from Cuba. <laughs> well, I'm not a judge. I don't smoke. Sorry I couldn't get anything from the handbills. That's all right. Goodbye, son. Bye, sir. As Dan approached the general store, Smokey came out carrying a small bundle of supplies and went to his horse at the hitch rack. Dan's attention was suddenly drawn to the man's boots. The lower part of each boot was covered with a layer of gray dust. Gray dust on his boots. Just like the dust on the outlaw's boots. I'll follow him and see where he goes. Come on, Victor. Then, using the knowledge he'd gained from the Lone Ranger and Tonto, trailed Smokey without attracting the outlaw's attention. But as he approached the entrance to Limestone Canyon... Stop and reach! I got you covered! Oh, ho, oh, Victor! Ho, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho! Get him! Get him! Come on! Ho, oh, ho oh, yeah, ho! Oh. I was watching in case somebody followed Smokey. Good thing I was. Hey, you're the young fellow who was on the stage yesterday. That's right. Oh, there oh, oh. So I came back. The sneaking Maverick was trailing you, Smokey. It's a good thing you were on guard. Say, he's the hombre who was passenger on the stage yesterday. Yeah, I recognized him right off. I don't know how he spotted you, though. That don't matter. It's his hard luck that he did. Shall I plug him? No, no, I'll take him to the shack. You wait here a while to see if anyone else was following. Then come on to the shack. All right. Right into the canyon ahead of me. And no tricks or I'll put a bullet in your back. Get gone. Come on, Victor. Get up. A short time later, Smokey shoved Dan ahead of him into the shack. Go ahead inside, you. Hey, who's that, Smokey? The young hombre who was riding the stage yesterday. He trailed me from town. Oh, holy mackerel. I wonder why he trailed you. Most likely recognized me in town. But I can't figure out how I did it. I'd right, speak up, you. How come you follow me out here? If you'd been smart, you'd have cleaned your boots after the stage robbery. That gray dust made me suspicious. So that's it. Well, now that you're here, we can't let you get away. You think you're smart, don't you? Sit down. <laughs> Dan was tied to the chair, then gagged. After inspecting the knots to make certain they were secure, Smokey said, Yeah, that'll hold him. 
He'll sure be mighty sorry he picked up my trail. Maybe we ought to drill him and dump his body in the river. I agree. But the boss might find out and be sore about it. We'll wait till he tells us what to do with this snooper. And knowing the boss, I'll say this young maverick will be dead before morning. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. Well, Pronto, ever been to a picnic before? Mm, at Little Bighorn. That was no picnic. Maybe not for cavalry. Why, it's the Lone Stranger and Pronto. Hello, ma'am. Hello. <laughs> Can I get you boys some Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger buns? Much obliged, ma'am. Here you are. Well, how come there are no hot dog or hamburger in these buns? Maybe they're vegetarians. Why, goodness gracious, no. We just love the baked while you sleep fresh taste so much. We never put anything in our Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Well, they're very delicious. Thank you, and goodbye, ma'am. Oh, my. He handed me a silver bullet. Me take that. Indian giver. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. I owe Marita. Away! to continue. Dan Weed, captured by the three outlaws and tied and gagged in the shack, realized that unless he found a way to get help, he had little chance of surviving. After a short time, Blinky came to the shack, and the three men played cards. Then, after eating lunch, Smokey said, Blinky, we'll ride to town to see the boss, Al. You stand guard at the entrance to the canyon until we get back. Yeah? You think it's safe to leave that fellow here alone? Sure, he's tied good and gagged. Don't worry, he'll be here when we get back. Let's go. Dan waited until the three crooks were gone. Then he looked around in hopes of finding some means to loosen his bonds. As he glanced through the side window, he saw his horse Victor tied to a sapling a short distance away. By using his toes, he managed to inch the chair across the floor to the window, which was closed. Finally, he reached the window and found that his head came above the windowsill. He maneuvered the chair until the back of his head rested against the window pane. Gritting his teeth, he bent his head forward, then brought it back with a smashing blow against the glass. Disregarding the small cut on the back of his head, Dan managed to turn the chair sideways. Then he faced the open window and saw that Victor was looking his way. The intelligent white horse saw his young master with a gag tied to his mouth. Victor knew Dan needed help and tried to get loose by bucking and pulling on the line that held him to the sapling. Unable to break it, Victor took it into his mouth and began gnawing. Within a short time, the rope parted. With a loud snort, Victor trotted toward the broken window. Dan turned his head and leaned back. For a moment, Victor nibbled at Dan's ear. Then, seeming to realize what he must do, he nibbled at the knot that held the gag. Finally, the knot gave... And the gag came loose. Oh, oh, good boy, Victor. Now come inside. Go to the door and come inside, Victor. <laughs> Victor stood a moment as though puzzled and tentatively reached his head toward the broken window. No, Victor, no. You'll get cut by that broken glass. The door, Victor. The door. Come through the door. <laughs> Victor pawed the ground, then raised his head and whinnied in understanding. He whirled and trotted around the corner of the shack. A moment later, Dan heard the click of the latch as Victor pressed down on it with his nose. Then the door was pushed open. That's fine, Victor. Get me loose, fella. Untie me, boy. Victor, as well as Silver and Scout, had been trained for just such emergencies. The intelligent horse found the knot that held his young master's hands. That's right, Victor. Keep trying, boy. After many attempts, Victor's strong teeth pulled apart the knot that held Dan's hands. That's it. That's great, Victor. Now I'll untie my feet. Within a short time, Dan got to his feet and was free once more. As he started toward the door, something glittered on the hearth. He stooped and picked it up. A cigar band on a cigar stump. 
Ah, La Marina. That's the brand the freight line owner smokes. He must have been here. I'll go find the Lone Ranger and Tano. They'll know what to do. Come along, Victor. Easy, boy. Steady, fella. I'll go out through the far end of the canyon to avoid the guard. Come on, Victor. When Dan arrived at the camp, he found the Lone Ranger and Tonto already there. He told them what had happened and showed them the cigar band. Then the Lone Ranger spoke. Dan, Lord Pierce must be in with those crooks. He may be the boss they spoke about. That's right. What we do, Kimasari? Let me think a moment. Yeah. This should do it. Toto, go back with Dan the way he came from the shack to avoid the guard. Tie and gag him again, then hide nearby to make certain he isn't harmed. Ah, and what you do? I'll remove my mask and disguise my features. Then I'll go talk to Pierce. But before I do, I'll find the sheriff and the posse and tell them of my plans. You think Dan will be all right? Yes, with you nearby to protect him. If things work out, we should be able to catch those three outlaws along with Mort Pierce. <laughs> After identifying himself to the sheriff, the Lone Ranger related what Dan had discovered and told of his plan. Then he rode to town and stopped in front of Mort Pierce's office. Oh, easy, oh, easy. Steady, big boy. Well, stranger, what can I do for you? Howdy, Mr. Pierce. I just left the posse because I had to come back to town on business. But the sheriff asked me to tell you they have a line on the outlaws. He thought you might like to know. Mm, how sure is he? I mean, has the has the posse found their hideout? Well, not yet, but they found tracks they know of those of the crooks. And the sheriff figures he'll find the hideout within an hour or so. Just a matter of following their trail now. Those hombres are mighty clever covering their tracks. Maybe the sheriff will lose a trail again. Nope. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before they move in on those coyotes. Reckon that's mighty good news for you. Mm, yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks for the information, stranger. Glad to give it to you. Goodbye, Mr. Pierce. Bye. The Lone Ranger mounted and rode to the edge of town, where he waited in a stand of trees. Soon, he saw Mort Pierce heading out the trail on horseback. There he goes. Now we'll follow him, big fella. Come on, Silver. Mort, disturbed by the news and wishing to reach the shack to warn his men, rode at top speed. At the entrance to the canyon, he called to Al to join him. Then the two men rode on to the shack. Oh, 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 uh, steady. Back here I just found out the sheriff and his posse have a line on this place. Yeah. You have to leave here right away. Ooh, what about the young hombre we got tied up here? Shoot him and hide his body in the thicket. Yeah. We can't take any chances now. Yeah, funny thing, when we came in a short time ago, we found him still here. But that window's broken. It sure is a mystery. Forget that. Maybe it was already broken and you didn't notice it. All right, Smokey, you take your gun and drill that snooper. All right, boys. Smokey drew his gun and stood a short distance behind Dan Reed. But before he could pull the trigger... Hey, 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 hey Redskin at the window, I'll get him. Got your guns, all of you. Oh, my hand! Hey, that's the oh. stranger who came to my office. Use your gun, Al. Hey, hold it, Pierce. My men are covering all of you from the windows. Keep them covered, Sheriff. I'll take their guns. Quickly, the Lone Ranger took the outlaw's guns, then took the gag from Dan's mouth and untied him. There you are, Dan. Sorry I had you take the risk. Oh, that's all right, sir. I knew Tano was watching. And the crooks didn't suspect that I'd left here and come back. Left and came back. They don't serve me. That gives you something to think about. Sheriff, now you have proof that Mort Pierce was leader of this small gang. That's right, sir. He gave the order to have me killed. And then told the men to leave before the sheriff found the hideout. The young Maverick's lying. I came out this way to join the posse and accidentally found this hideout. These crooks got the drop on me. They would have killed me along with the young man. You can't walk out on us. You planned to hold up and told us to kill the young hombre. He's lying. In fact, you'll find the loot in his office safe, still in the cash box. That's right. Mort's trying to get out of this with a whole skin. But we're not going to let him get away with it. Don't worry. We'll take him in with the rest of you. 
When we get to town, we'll get the evidence from his safe. I don't know how this happened. You can thank the tall stranger for getting a line on you, Pierce. The credit really goes to Dan. He was sharp enough to realize Mort Pierce was the leader when he found a cigar band here in this shack. What? Yes, a fancy La Marina band. Like the one he found in your office, Sheriff. Cigar band. (laughs) I say, now, that young fellow's going to turn into a mighty clever lawman someday. I hope so, Sheriff. My wallet they stole is in the table drawer. Good. Yep, here's the wallet. I'll hold it as evidence. You mort you and those fancy cigars. The fine leader you turned out to be. Let the young maverick like him out with you. Oh, shut up. I'm up, men. Then we'll take him back to Pecos. Right, I'm sure you and your men will be able to finish the job, Sheriff. So we'll leave now. Adios. Goodbye, mister. We should have finished off that young smart aleck when we first caught him. <laughs> oh, he's a smart aleck, all right. A darn sight smarter than all of you put together. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he learned what he knows from his friend, the mask man. What? Mask man? What mask man? The tall stranger usually wears a mask, but he used a disguise to fool you this time. <laughs> you see, Pierce, that fellow who tricked you into coming here is really the Lone Ranger. Hello there. I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. As you know, Marita means all that's fresh and good that goes into and comes out of your oven. And Marita Brown and Serve Rolls are the ones that bake to a flaky golden brown in just six minutes. There are 12 delicious Marita Brown and Serve Rolls in every package. And if you don't use them all right away, that's all right, too. Marita guarantees freshness for several days after you buy them. Of course, in your freezer, they'll last indefinitely. But don't wait for company to have Marita brown and serves. Your family would love to have a basket of fresh, steaming hot rolls with breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. It'll mean you care. And what a delicious way to show your love. After all, your family deserves the best. They deserve Marita. Marita Brown and serve rolls. <laughs> 